to that digital footprint is hard to erase. Harris County Assistant District Attorney Wayman Wesley now, now knows that firsthand. Wesley shows a different side of himself online. Many people on TikTok and Instagram know him as Chef Way. His recipes and cooking videos have attracted thousands of followers. Now, some of his old tweets have folks pissed off. One of them shows a side-by-side -side of a black woman and a trash dump with Wesley writing, I see no difference. Keep in mind, this is also a black man. He's also seen commenting on a picture of two black women writing that the dark one messed up the pick. Wesley has since issued an apology. His boss, District Attorney Kim Ogg, says he was going through alcohol abuse issues back then, and she accepts that as an explanation for his behavior because, he, because he's now getting help. Let's bring in our PR specialist, Bridget Joe, and attorneys, Audia Jones and Oliver Brown, uh, who is also the CEO of Online Trolls. <laughs> Trolls, <-y. laughs> We just had you here. Oliver, you're back again. <laughs> so first of all, as a PR specialist, mm -hmm. when you look at these tweets and what he has put out in the past 2015, 2016, but now in 2023, he's an assistant district attorney. Your thoughts on this and the damage that it could do not only to him, but to the office. Absolutely. This is horrible. And I mean, even though it was back then, that still shows you that you still feel that way. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you apologized or not. It's still out there. And so they hired him anyway, knowing that he had this out there. Because I did my, my research. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, what are you guys hiding? Now, if they would have put it out there at first in the beginning, then maybe some of the backlash wouldn't have been so harsh. But now it's like you knew, you knowingly hired this man. And he had all of these things on his tweets. So they found that out seven years ago. Audia, your thoughts on this as a fellow attorney and someone who may come into contact with this guy? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things that comes to my mind is a deplorable failure really on the on the part of the the leadership or lack thereof within the Harris County District Attorney's Office to properly vet individuals that are coming in to prosecute individuals that are facing life or death that are facing significant amount of t amount of time in jail um, and not just that but it's like here we go again here's another issue to add to the problems that the Harris County District Attorney's Office is facing um, he's not the first and won't be the last with issues of racial bias and prejudice within the office and I know that firsthand because I to work there um, but the problem is at what point are we going to be proactive district attorney and not reactive and put programs and processes and excuse me sensitivity training into place um, you know and, and in all honesty a drunk man's words are a sober man's thoughts so I I know those were his thoughts back in 2015 and 2016 we know that we don't know if they're his thoughts today however that is not someone I would ever want to prosecute me as a black woman knowing how he feels or to even represent me uh, so, you know, I, I don't know where he stands today, um, but I will say at some point we have to be reactive, excuse me, proactive rather than reactive. And Oliver, we're going to bring you in, but first I have a question for you. Do you think we would be here tonight talking about him still being there if he were a white man? Yes, I do. I do believe that we would. Wait, wait, definitely wait, wait. Do y'all believe that? No. What? Well, we haven't talked that? about the issues, the number of racially biased well, and prejudiced issues that they have. I, I mean, Oliver, you, you know damn well. <laughs> well hold on. As a white man, <laughs> look, his ass would be on unemployment already. Yeah, yeah, if he was a white man, he would he would have already been canceled for that's that. That's what I'm saying. Cancel yeah. and fire. And fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, yeah. Well, but, no. Oh, okay, yeah. That is yeah, not yeah. true. Well, we... Well, he, as a former prosecutor, I can actually go through instances of individuals that are still working in that office today that have had racially biased and prejudiced issues, and but they are But was made very public Caucasian. like this? That no, may be not the as difference. That as right. the thing is, that's the he, difference. He yeah. went viral, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that, that's part of the problem, right? So when he got 10,000 followers, he should have been scrubbing his, his, his social media altogether, mm -hmm. right? He was at 250,000 followers. You know there's going to be someone online that's going to go back and do their research. When I first saw the first one where it was like, oh, too dark or something like that, I was like, well, maybe this guy has a racial preference or something like that. But then it just got progressively worse and worse. And I was like, look, even Kevin Samuels ain't going to defend this <laughs> crap, all right? So, so after your reason, because you had a different position when we first talked. Absolutely. But you, you dug deeper. Yeah, because I didn't really know what was going on, uh -huh. to, to be quite honest. But 
Well, once I saw the pretty girl next to the trash dump thing and that comment, I was like, yeah, bro, you're kind of done after that one. So probably going to have to take a break and then come back right around Thanksgiving, probably with a new recipe or something. <laughs> I'll warm this over, but right now it's not looking too good. And really quick, let's show his statement. If we can, Mr. Wesley has explained that these posts came during a period in which he was struggling with serious personal issues including alcohol so when you hear that Bridget your thoughts on that well like um, Adi was saying you know drunk man speaks a sober mind I still don't believe you like you said Oliver even if he does wait till Thanksgiving that is your true personality so if he does come back can he come back yes however it would be very, very what does it hard. take though for something like that I mean because now we have you know people Turkish saying, at Thanksgiving towards I mean you know <laughs> invite a whole bunch of black women to Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> and cook for us you know what I mean so it, it's going to be tough for him especially this and, time. and your thoughts what do you think it will take for him to come back um, you know, I, what I will say is just in a logical way of thinking is every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. Um, and I, I do think, I do believe in second chances. However, me as a individual, I would, again, I would reiterate, I would never want him to prosecute a case that I have a client against. I would never want him to defend an individual that I would send over. I would, ne as a black female or as a as a black person. And really quick, let's bring Oliver in because we yeah. have 30 seconds left. Do you think District Attorney Kim Ogg is now stuck after the statement she put out supporting him and tomorrow there is a protest by activists and some Okay, so Kim Ogg is in a weird position because she's the government and that's First Amendment. So she cannot go and terminate him because she would violate his First Amendment right. Also, mm -hmm. that did not happen. That statement was made five years prior to his employment. So therefore, it's really going to be protected by First Amendment and he wouldn't fall under that contractual exception for bringing ridicule onto the DA's office. So I think he would have a strong First Amendment claim if they terminate him. Mm -hmm. And I think she's making the right decision with her, her position. Boy, you sound like a lawyer, <laughs> <Yes>. oh, <laughs> My God in heaven. Thank you all for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored.